I'm a former visa officer and today let's talk about what happens when you apply for a US visa. What is that process? Well, it's going to start with you submitting an application. There are three parts to this. You're going to fill out the DS-160, you're going to pay the MRV fee, and then you're going to schedule an appointment. Now, the government does have their own websites where you can do this. Unfortunately, they're not always easily identifiable. USTravelDocs.com, these websites don't sound very official. They don't even have .gov endings on them, which leads a lot of people to use an agent at this stage in the process. That's understandable. Even if you know which sites to go to, these websites can be cumbersome, they can be unwieldy, they can kick you out, you can lose information that you've already filled in, you have to redo it. It can take hours and if you're busy or not tech savvy, then having someone who can help you do this is a good idea and could even be a, a good investment. Make sure that you're choosing someone who you know and trust, who has a good reputation and who's not going to try to take advantage of you. Some people I have spoken to have horror stories where the person they'd entrusted with this put their own address as the address where the passport should be returned after the visa was issued, and then they held it hostage for ransom, and until the applicant paid them even more money, they wouldn't give them their passport with the visa in it. You want to avoid that at all costs. You also wanna make sure that you're, you're gonna have the final say on anything that they submit. Don't entrust everything to them and hope that they submit things correctly. Make sure that you know what's in the application because in the end, at the visa interview, you are going to be held responsible for whatever information shows up in your DS-160. Okay, so these three steps are the first that you're going to take in order to apply for your visa. After that, in some places in the world, you're going to go for a fingerprinting appointment. In Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, India, other places, you're going to have a first appointment that may be one or two days before your appointment for the visa interview, where you're going to go for your biometrics, your fingerprints will be taken, perhaps a photo will be taken, or you're gonna submit a photo, and some documents will be checked. This is going to be a step in some places. In other countries, however, that doesn't exist, and you're just gonna go straight to the embassy or the consulate for the visa interview. When you arrive at the embassy or the consulate for your visa interview, first what you're going to do is you're going to line up outside. There's going to be some local staff members who are out there who are going to look at your documents. Uh, you're going to have your passport. You're going to have your DS-160 confirmation page. You're going to have whatever other materials that you're bringing to your visa interview, an I-20 if you're applying for an F visa, a DS-2019 if you're applying for a J visa, uh, any supporting documents, your financial documents, documents, housing documents, anything that you're bringing to your interview you're going to have, they're going to look at your DS-160 confirmation page and your appointment time. They're going to make sure that you're there at the right time. They might sort you into different groups who are going to enter the embassy or consulate at the, the time that's right before your visa interview is scheduled for, and then you're going to pass through security and enter the facility. Once you're on the inside, there are a couple different things that may happen because every consulate and every embassy does things slightly different, but if you've not had your fingerprints taken, at a different facility a few days beforehand, then you're going to go to a window where your fingerprints are confirmed. They take your fingerprints, they confirm that you are indeed the person who uh, is presenting that passport and inside that passport. Then you're going to go to another window where there's going to be intake. There's going to be a member of the local staff who takes all of your documents and makes sure that all the information that you're submitting is correct. Is your name spelled correctly? Is your passport number correct? Is your date of birth correct? They're making sure that all the documents that you need are present and that all of your information is correct in their system so that there's no misspellings, there's no typos or anything like that when they print your visa. If there are any typos afterwards when you get your visa back, this is bad. Do not travel with it. You need to contact the embassy or the consulate and tell them that this has happened so that you can get a new one. It's super important that all those data points are accurate or it could cause you a big problem when you try to travel. After that, the final step is the interview. That's when you go to the window where you're lining up. You're gonna be directed by a local staff member randomly to go up to whichever window opens up. Or if you have a specific visa type, there may be windows that deal with your specific visa type. And there's going to be an officer there who's an American. They're going to be an American citizen. Americans come in all uh, shapes and sizes from all parts of the world. So don't think, oh, this person looks like they're from my country. They must not be a real American. The consular officer is an American citizen who has a consular commission who is a US diplomat. And they are the person that's going to be doing your interview and also having the final decision. There's no 
way to appeal that to a manager. You can't ask to speak to their supervisor. It's that person. That person is the supervisor of the process that you are undergoing. That person, that consular officer, will make the decision about your visa. When you approach that window, they're most likely going to motion for you to pass your passport, perhaps your DS-160 confirmation page, perhaps your I-20. Not all of your documents. Just the documents they need in order to start the interview. They're going to get that document, they're going to scan a barcode, and that's when your interview begins. They're going to start asking you questions. The most common question that they might ask you to begin is, what's your purpose of travel to the US? Why are you going to the US? Why do you want to go to the US? What are you going to do in the US? Something like that. It's going to be very general. That's the starting point. They're going to be reviewing your DS-160 while they're asking you questions, and then the questions are going to get more and more specific and more and more pointed as they try to identify information that either allows them to feel confident that they should issue you your visa or makes them feel suspicious and leads them down the path to refusing your visa. Let's talk about those possible outcomes. One possible outcome. At the end of the interview, the visa officer says, congratulations, your visa is approved. They're going to hand you back a piece of paper that gives you the instructions for what you should expect next. And you're going to take that and you're going to leave. You're going to go home. You'll receive instructions about how to get your passport later. It could be that they, they send it back directly to your house. It could be that they send it to the fingerprinting facility. It could be that they send it to another facility where you pick it up. It's different in every country that's arranged locally, but they're going to be instructions on that piece of paper that tell you what you are supposed to do next. Another possibility is that your visa is going to be refused. In many cases, the majority of cases when a visa is refused, it's under 214B, which is the visa officer's judgment call. In this case, you're going to get a piece of paper that's not specific to you. They haven't singled out the reasons why they refused you. They handed you a stock letter that says you've been refused under 214B, yada, 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 something about ties to your country. You're not eligible. Don't read that specifically and think, oh, it must mean that I don't have ties. What it means is that the visa officer did not believe that you were eligible for the visa for whatever reason. They didn't believe that you were going to go to the US and then come back home without using the visa in a way it was not intended. It's not necessarily just about those times. There's also the possibility that you may be refused under a different ineligibility, in which case you will be notified of that with a different form that's going to have information checked on it that tells you this is the reason why you were refused. 6C1, 2A1, 9B2, whatever it is, they're going to fill it in, they're gonna check it, they're gonna write in the specific code if it's not already on there, and you're gonna know exactly what the reason was, what the clause was, under which they refused your visa. Now the third possibility is that you're put into administrative processing, which is also known as 221G. What is 221G? What is administrative processing? This just means that the visa officer doesn't make a decision at the end of your interview. It doesn't mean one thing for everyone. It could mean the visa officer's keyboard stopped working and they can't hit the enter button so they can't enter your visa right now. They need to get a new keyboard, uh, but they need to move on to the next applicant. So they put you into 221G. That, that's a, a random example, but it can be something as simple as that. It doesn't always mean that there's some type of intense check that's going to happen that's gonna take six months. All 221G means is that they're not issuing the visa right now and they're not refusing it right now. It's just 221G. Now it could mean that you're going to undergo a check and it could take quite a while, in which case you're going to be handed a form that either tells you you're in 221G, please wait for us to contact you with further instructions, or it's going to tell you that you need to do something now. That could be you need to submit some other documents to us. You need to submit these financial documents. You need to submit this letter from a university. You need to submit your transcripts. You need to submit uh, your business plan. Whatever it is, they'll mark it on that sheet and they'll tell you what you need to submit and how to submit it. If they hand you a seat that tells you you need to do nothing, what do you think you need to do? Nothing. Now, you will see on this sheet, a lot of times it's a very frustrating thing for me because there's no reason to call it a refusal. Even though in the regulations it's called refusal under 221G, that's misleading to the public, but the sheet they're going to give you is going to say you have been refused under 221G. Do not let this discourage you. If it's 221G, it's not a refusal in the way that 99% of humans think of refusal, this word, as meaning. What it means is that they did not take a decision right then and there at the interview. It means a decision will be made later, maybe after they got more information from you, maybe after they've done more investigation and research on their own, but a decision will be made later. After that, you're gonna take that, you're going to leave the embassy, leave the consulate, and you're going to follow the instructions that are on that sheet. I hope that gave you a good rundown of what's going to happen on the day of your visa interview, how the process goes, even from when you're applying at the beginning to when you go and have your fingerprints taken, all the way up until you get to that window where you're speaking to that American consular officer who's going to make the visa approval or rejection decision on your application. And I hope that this helps you get your visa issued.